Okay. Am I live? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey everyone, I'm Kronos, and I'll be running Halo CE Legendary on the MCC version of the game. So, a uh, couple quick things. Uh, the MCC version has load times, which are generally removed when uh, we're considering like timing for this game. And uh, r the reason why I'm running MCC is because of a couple new tricks that are available on the MCC version of the game that are not an OG. So I'll get started here right now. So I'll give the countdown. So three, two, one, start. Okay. Yeah, so this is Halo Combat Evolved and this is the fourth time it's been featured at a GDQ. Uh, other previous times it was featured was by Goat Rope and Garish Goblin. I think that was in like... So once again, this is on legendary difficulty, so I am expecting a couple deaths. Hopefully not, though. I'll try not to die. And right here, we skip grabbing the pistol. Normally, you grab a pistol right there, but if you walk fast enough in straight lines, you skip grabbing that. And we're going to do... Uh, backpack reloading very often in this run so you'll see me very often uh, reload my weapon and switch to the other weapon that I have in my backpack and what happens is I'm double tapping reload and it reloads my weapon while it's in my backpack so I can uh, use my other weapon to shoot so right here, I'm trying to get a bunch of grenades for this next section. Hopefully, I can make it through here. Oh, scary elite. We're fine. And yeah, this is the Pillar of Autumn. It's the first mission of the game. It's pretty uh, standard, not many tricks. Trying to get a checkpoint, there we go. And this is the hardest hallway in the Pillar of Autumn. And get through that just fine, nice. <laughs> okay. Everything is going pretty smoothly so far. It's really nice. And we're good, okay. Covenant, on the landing above us. So here's a small nade jump. Skips climbing the stairs fully. And yeah, we're just going to run through a lot of these combat sections very quickly. And right there, I threw a plasma grenade. And what happens is if you throw a grenade and the enemies don't see you throw it, they'll stare at the grenade on the floor and, like, <laughs> just die to it a lot of times. So right there, I tried to do a dialogue skip called Maintenance Skip. So if you kill the grunts at a very specific time, uh, you'll be able to skip a piece of dialogue, and it opens that door faster. I didn't get it there, but we're fine. Here's another section I'm just going to run through. I got blocked by those grunts, which is kind of scary. And yeah. <laughs> it looks like the Covenant wanted to catch you next. So far, so good. I'm really happy with this uh, Pillar of Autumn right now. This level is notorious for being a pretty hard reset level. 
because of how often like your run can die to just random grenades chain reacting with one another and a chain reaction happens with uh, grenades on the floor getting blown up by just explosions that you or other enemies cause by their own grenades so right there you can see one right there oh, okay that was <laughs> okay Almost, almost a perfect POA, but that elite decided to. <laughs> okay, we're we're fine. We're fine. That's what you get for not checking your corners, guys. Make sure to check your corners, like right there. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll have a random elite live a plasma grenade. And now we're into the next level, Halo. Okay, so uh, Chief, can you hear right me? here at the very start, Alert. we're going to do a grenade right? jump, can you move? and this is going Seven. to skip a drop ship that normally Seven. comes down, along with a couple banshee spawns, which is really nice. I detected multiple covenant so, on approach. once I, I do it here, there the should hill. be time for a couple Alert. donations. Alright, that sounds good, Kronos, and I just want to let everybody know that we have met the Celeste Incentive. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you very, very much for all of your hard work. The next one we're going to be working on is that Ice Trap Mayhem Incentive. That is for Ocarina of Time Randomizer later. We are currently $890 out of 5000 so let's get started on that incentive. In the meantime, for some donations... We have $30 from Derek Burns who says, Celeste teaches us that no mountain is unbeatable. Let's keep that spirit going and beat this together. And then Avarame donates $1,000, thank you very much, saying, had to donate for the Halo run. We used to race through legendary co-op, two teams of two, long before we'd ever heard the word speed run. Thank you, GDQ, for all that you do. Okay. I just missed my nade jump right there. <laughs> it's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> it's normally one of the easiest nade jumps in the game. A quick thing I should note, uh, though, is the geometry for MCC and the original versions of the game are different. And the MCC version is kind of harder since there's an invisible wall of geometry right there. Okay. So right here, this is a tough combat section, so I really hope this goes well. I got three needlers, oh boy. Or four needlers? Oh my gosh, this is some really bad RNG. <laughs> okay. I have normally never do this strat. This is not a good strat. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's really bad RNG. That's kind of unfortunate. <laughs> okay. It's fine. It's around a minute of time lost. <laughs> Guess we have a, enough time for another donation or so. Sounds good, Kronos. Keep going. I believe in you, all right? You got this. <laughs> we have $50 from Anonymous. He says, thank you to all the runners. Hopefully together we can all get through this. We have a $500 donation from Anonymous. He says, climb that mountain. We have $500 from AR-521 who says, dedicating this donation to my friend John, whose birthday is next week. Congrats on being old. I don't know how your friend John feels, AR, about you calling them old, but dang, that's brutal. Back to you, Kronos. Okay. Yeah, normally the chance of getting a plasma pistol right there is almost guaranteed the fact that i got four needlers is just marathon luck so to say uh yeah like normally i've i've never seen it happen like it's super rare if anything to get a four needler spawns normally you would ju just get like three needlers at most now I got, like, four plasma pistol spawns, which is just fine. I should be just fine here. Okay, I got three. And we're good. See, it's way easier if you have the right weapons. Okay. So right here, we're going to kill a bunch of our own marines. 
This is so we can get a dialogue skip for all of these dropships. Normally they take forever to come down. But by killing the marines, uh, it speeds up the process and it allows us to do a trick called drop skip. So what I'm going to be doing is spawn killing all of these ships as soon as possible. This is a pretty tough trick. Because you have to basically spawn kill everything for it to work. You can leave like an enemy alive or two and it'll still work, but you have to make sure they're all dead before you try to go to the next one. And all of these are pretty precise. So right there I grabbed the plasma grenade for this next dropship as well. And we're going to do some specific grenade lineups right here to spawn kill these guys. So, I'm not sure if I got it. It looks like I did, so we're good. Yeah, so normally you would get an extra dropship to spawn there, and that dropship is really difficult. It has like three elites and a bunch of grunts. And if you don't have the grenades for it, it becomes really difficult. So right here, we're just going to kill these dropships with this last dropship right here. Oh, this elite sometimes spawns here. And we're going to kill this last jackal, and we're good for going to getting the warthog. So you can uh, technically go past this entire section without killing any of these enemies, but you won't get a warthog for the rest of the run. And the warthog, which is the human vehicle in this game, uh, it's really fast, and considering the amount of driving that we have to go through for this level, it's way faster to do that. So right here we're going to get in, and we're going to do a bunch of driving here. Not much to say about this driving section, so have time for a couple more donations. All right, Kronos, and this face should be very familiar to you. We have $10 from Sorix who says, Thank you, Kronos, for always being a positive voice in the community and always helping out. Much love and good luck on your run. Yeah, shout out to Sorix. He wanted to help uh, commentate for me, but... <laughs> Chief, I, I kind of turned him down at the last minute shadow. because I already said I would be going solo, like basically the day of. And, uh, what else? Yeah, he, Sorix is also the Halo 3 legendary and easy world record holder. Great guy. Do we have time for one more? Yeah. This is another friendly face here. We have $10 from Gelk underscore JR who says, Hey, Kronos, good luck on the run. Your events are great and hope this run will get more people involved. Also, <laughs> a recent development confirms that the Master Chief thinks that pineapple doesn't belong on pizza. It's a little <laughs> questionable there, Gelk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I personally don't like pineapple on pizza, so I'm... I'm definitely agreeing with that statement. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so I forgot to explain right there. So that was a warthog fling. You'll be seeing it multiple times in this run. Basically, if you drive your warthog into like a drift and then get out of it, you can kind of fling yourself in a direction very quickly. And it's used for getting past a couple areas quicker, along with being able to clip through doors and other objects. Uh, 
And one thing that uh, Gelk said for his donation was about the events. So I currently help coordinate a bunch of Halo speedrunning events for the Halo Runs uh, community. So shoutouts to haloruns.com, by the way. So if you're interested in Halo speedrunning, you should definitely go there for all your Halo speedrunning needs. Okay, that was a pretty bad fleet. <laughs> We should search the interior of and the one of the major events that we have going on right now is the Grand Prix. So it's a bunch of runners of Halo are going to just try to play one level and beat each other like in that level with whatever time that they can submit for that specific level that is done that day. It's like a 14 week thing with a random level chosen from any of the Halo games in the franchise. We should search the interior of those structures before we leave. It's a pretty fun event. There's also like a $200 prize pot that has been funded by the community for it, which is really cool. A uh, couple things so far in this run. Right now I'm killing the Marines in each of these areas and going to them in a specific order. That is so that uh, it counts the objective as being completed when our allies die, which is kind of funny. And because we technically can't fail the mission, we just fail the objective and it says, well, we can go to the next area and try to save those Marines. And right here, this is the last area of Marines we have to save. But because we actually need to clear one of the areas to complete the level, we're going to be uh, killing all of our enemies here and having our Marines help out. There are some Marines hiding in the hills above the structure. Okay. So wait for one to get in. Oh, it didn't get in the turret. Come on. Here you go. What are you doing? We have to stay with the Marines. This is And I have to find this other jackal, which is gone somewhere that I can't see. There we go. Unfortunately, I can't shoot him. But we're fine. Now we're just sniping all of these guys. Okay, so this is kind of bad. Uh, my turret marine died. That should be fine. Spawn kill these guys. And there's one jackal alive somewhere. Hello, jackal. Come out. This is the guy that I missed. And we should be good for this level. <laughs> oh yeah, this spirit just kind of crashes into the mountain. <laughs> Very funny thing to note. Truth and reconciliation touch down on a desert plateau roughly 300 kilometers upspin. And now we're going to the hardest mission, in my opinion, uh, TNR or Truth and Reconciliation. And the reason why this level is hard is because here, starting here is where we're getting some of the major tricks in the game. And this level also has some of the hardest combat sections of all the rest of the levels. So hopefully I can get past uh, this mission very smoothly. So right here at the start, we're going to try to run through each of these sections. Gonna play it safe here and snipe these two elites though first, just to play safe. I've detected Covenant stationary guns near the next pass. 
I recommend using and then your snipe this elite that rounds the corner. If I could snipe, that would be nice. <laughs> Everybody out! Hit a marine! Go, go, go! The core ain't paying us by the hour! Stick to the higher ground to the right. We should be able to recon the Covenant position without being spotted. I've detected Covenant stationary uh, that guns bad. in the next pass. I recommend okay. using your sniper rifle to take out the gunners while I call for marine support. There we go. Let's get the triple collateral right there. <laughs> Oh, right here, I have to wait for these guys to die, and there's a big chain reaction of those plasma grenades right there. Now right here, I'm going to snipe these two enemies. Okay, got a nice checkpoint. That's a really nice checkpoint. Uh, where did that elite go? Oh, hello. Don't find me, I just want to kind of play safe right there. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm playing badly. <laughs> okay, this is fine. Just need to clean up my aim. Yeah, this section is notoriously tough to run through. And it doesn't help that my aim is not playing well today. Okay. I mean, I'm not a... I'm not the best at uh, shooting in this game. My aim isn't the best. There's a lot of other runners in the community that I would say have really, really good aim. Uh, if you want to check them out, it's like Max Lu and Garish Goblin are some of the best at combat in this game. Okay. So right here, there is a faster route to not grab the camo here, but this is the Marathon safe strat. So right here, I'm just going to do this entire lift fight section. This is a really tough section in the game because there's a bunch of enemies that spawn. And I'm going to have to snipe them. There's like eight waves that come down that lift and I have to make sure I <laughs> can spawn kill them correctly. Oh, my marine threw a frag grenade at me. So if I die here, it's their fault. <laughs> and I got pretty dang unlucky right there. Oh, that, that was an instant spawn wave. This is... Uh, that's so unfortunate. Okay. Cortana to Echo 419. Requesting reinforcements at our position. Roger. Okay. Just have to make sure I get... <laughs> I can not get naded by my marines this time and get set to like no health <laughs> they tried you saw that grenade just fly past right there they tried to kill me okay let's try to get this this time
Okay, should be good here. There we go, that was way better. <laughs> That's how it should go, more so. I'll just kill these hunters, and we're going to do the first major trick of the game. So I'm going to get a couple plasma grenades. Once we're inside the ship, I can hold okay. on the captain's command neural interface. And we're going to do belly skip. So this trick involves blowing up this wraith, and we're going to teleport inside of it once it blows up. And I have bad dialogue, so I'm going to play it safe here and wait for the checkpoint to happen. Because if I <laughs> if I don't get the checkpoint, it's pretty bad. If I fail this, that was really long dialogue. So okay, let's hope I can get this. Oh boy, this is not good. Uh. Almost. There we go. Now just hope to not fail this platforming here. There is a... Uh, if you play on new graphics, you can see all of the out-of-bounds geometry here. But because I haven't learned the new graphics... Uh, routing for this out of bounds section i'm doing it the way you would normally do it on the original version of the game okay and it skips this entire section of fighting that we normally would have to do Okay. Okay. Don't mind my combat. I am playing pretty... Oh my gosh. Okay. Wanna not do that? Okay. Calm down, game. Okay. Okay. We're good, we're good. That's, that's all I needed. Okay, now I have a checkpoint and everything, and we're good. Okay, so this is our next trick. This is a quad nade stack. So normally you would have to kill a bunch of enemies at this section. But, oh, I missed it. That's fine, I can do a backup here. Just a bunch of grenade jumps to get to the top level. And that skips walking all the ramps up to the very top. <laughs> okay, and now here, this is the bridge section. We're going to just clear all of these enemies. And just hopefully not die. Should be good though. And there we go. So now we're just running to the prison room to save keys. And hopefully everything works out there as well. And we're trying to kill all of these enemies right here. Technically, you can pass them without killing them. But they'll be there when you're making your way back. So you have to make sure that you kill them all. So right here, gonna snipe these two invisible elites. Throw a, a frag grenade. 
and run out of sniper ammo. <laughs> but we're fine. We get more right here. We should head back to the shuttle bay and call for evac. And now we're just going to make our way out of the prison section. And the grunt decides to throw a grenade. Enemies throwing nades are very scary in this game. Okay. Now we're going to kill our own marines here, so we skip a bunch of dialogue that happens at this section. I have to make sure I don't kill Captain Keys, and Captain Keys being at the very front is really bad. I really need this to not happen. Here we go. Don't kill yourself, Keys. Okay. If Keys dies, then I reset back to the start of prison, and that's a really bad thing to happen. And now we're going to just kill elites at this section and keys naded himself i got a checkpoint though so i should be good what are you doing keys <laughs> what are you actually doing no way oh my gosh please <laughs> That was so... <laughs> okay. Keys, you can chill now. Okay. We're, we're good. We're out of there. That, <laughs> that shouldn't have happened like that, but we're fine. We're fine. <laughs> At least... Yeah. So, if you've played this level regularly, or TNR regularly, uh, you'll notice that that, ended, that level ended prematurely. That's because when you do the grenade stack, uh, beforehand, you'll be able to skip a trigger, which, uh, as you, like, go through an entire end section. So, yeah, it saves, like, a minute or so as well. Do we have time for a couple quick donations? I know that was a very action-packed yeah, yeah. segment. Oh my yeah. goodness, great the, job on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can have donations now. This is a beach walking section. All right, sounds good. We have $10 from Fabris, who says, so happy to catch Kronos on the stream. You got this. Greetings from Germany. <laughs> Gotta at least have a couple of those. Yeah. Uh, we have $50 from Sounds Good Man, who says, Master Chief enforcing planet-wide stay-at-home order. <laughs> I like that one. I don't know about the pineapple pizza one, though. And speaking yeah. of memes here, <laughs> we have a $7.77 donation from Michael M., who says, Loving GDQ and Halo runs. Shout-outs to my girlfriend, Diana, whose birthday was yesterday. Congrats on being older than that one guy, John. <laughs> I'd like to see that meme get carried over. That's pretty good. Poor John getting called out yet again on his own birthday. We have $25 from Eddie's Couch. He says, the upside of being an essential worker is at least I have money to donate. Here's to all the healthcare workers doing a superhuman amount of work to keep us safe and healthy. Dang, $25 found on a couch for a donation? That seems like a pretty legit way to donate that. <laughs> So real quick here, real quick follow-up on an incentive because I love to give updates. For Ice Trap Mayhem, which is for the Zooter Randomizer segment coming up in a little while, $890 out of $5,000. let us keep that train rolling towards that. Back to you, Kronos. Okay, so right there I just did a Warthog fling. Uh, yeah, just skip past that door on Silent Cartographer. And then we're going to just drop down all the way here to this button press, and we're going to do a trick called Stick Stack. And this trick is pretty phenomenal, if you haven't seen it before. So I'm going to throw six very precisely aimed grenades. And reach the very top level just like that. And because I have a checkpoint, oh, not do that. 
Gonna do this grenade jump. And get to the very top just like that. They've locked the doors. And we don't have enough firepower to get through. Cortana to keys. And that's basically the level. <laughs> Easy trick. This is the one level that I have world record on for the IL, so I'm really happy that it went well. <laughs> so now here, we're just going to kill these elites. It's like a one-shot kill. And there's... Like, we're just waiting on a timer here, so I have time. Let's use this time to correct my aim a bit. Also, quick thing to note, there is RNG with how the pistol works. There's pistol spread that is kind of completely random in this game. But yeah. <laughs> that was very clean. I'm really happy with that. <laughs> Uh, someone said that the Warthog part there was faster. It's actually not. It's uh, the same amount of time because you're just waiting for the pelicans to get there. <laughs> okay. So now here, this is AOTCR. This is a very trick-heavy level. There's very little combat on this mission. So right here, we're going to throw a frag grenade and just run past these enemies. Oh, I got meleeed from behind. Now we're just going to kill this guy. And all of these grunts. And we're going to do a trick called Banshee Grab. So right here we're going to stand at a very specific spot on the ground. The weather patterns here seem natural, not artificial. Okay. I wonder if the Kinda rain mess this up. are malfunctioning. Or if Should be fine. You crouch at a very specific time, and this causes the Banshee to arc this way. And I didn't get it. That was close-ish. The weather patterns here seem natural, not artificial. I wonder if the ring's environment systems are malfunctioning. Okay, try it a second time. There we go. And that just makes the elite kind of eject itself out of the a banshee. <laughs> and we're just able to pick it up and just fly to basically the end of the level. Now would be a good time if you have other donations. It's a lot of flying here. All right, sounds good, Kronos. We have $50 from Time Traveling Pigeon who says, Hey, GDQ, Halo was the first game I ever purchased with my own money, so it only seemed appropriate to donate during this run. The nostalgia is real. So glad to donate towards this great cause. We have $10 from Silverstreak who says, GDQ, thank you for doing this event. Everyone else, stay the bleep at home. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, so right here, I'm shooting to delay a checkpoint. And this is because there's going to be another trick called Banshee Teleports. And this is just for safety in case I fail it. And Banshee Teleports themselves are kind of interesting. Uh, what you do is, for the teleport, you end up uh, meleeing the Banshee so that your hitbox gets stuck kind of inside of it. And if you move in a specific direction, it'll teleport you to where the game thinks you should be. And we'll be doing this twice here. It is a pretty precise trick, but it's actually really easy to do.
just casually, if you just copy basically the positions that I look and where I am, you can just do it from wherever you have flat surfaces. It does work in multiplayer as well, but the lineup for those melees is different. So if you're going to try it in multiplayer, uh, yeah, just remember that. <laughs> So right here, I'm going to get out of the Banshee at a very specific spot on the ground. That should work. And I'm going to melee two spots and move to the right. And this teleports me all the way to the end of those hallways instead of having to walk through all of them. And then right here, we're going to fly our Banshee right to the ground here and do basically the same thing. I'm going to look at the two specific spots. Move to the right, and we're past the door that we normally open, and we just press the button on the other side of the door of the control room, and we finish that level. <clears throat> And now we're on to 343, the very scary level, especially if you played this game in your childhood. Like, <laughs> the flood is a very scary thing, very different from the rest of this game when you start playing it. So right here, I'm going to do a grenade jump that uh, you normally only do in an IL, but People should be using this in the full game run. It saves like a second. So right here, I'm going to do a very precise jump grenade. Oh, and I failed it. <laughs> okay. Well, that's kind of why people don't do it. But that's fine. Just do a backup rock jump. And now we're just going to make our way down to do our next trick on this level, which is called Reveal Skip. So generally in this mission, you're going to go through and find out what the flood are and go through an entire cutscene in a popcorn room of killing stuff. But we're going to skip all that. So we're going to shoot our way past these guys, throw a grenade right there to kill those jackals. And we're going to do a grenade jump right here. I kind of messed it up. That's fine. I'll just do a second attempt here. Oh, I messed it up again. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. Just like that. And there we go. <laughs> so now we skipped past the uh, entire reveal room segment. And now we're just trying to escape from this facility kind of thing. So right here, we're going to see the flood for the first time. Just all randomly here for no reason. <laughs> and now we're just going to make our way to the end. We're going to do Camo Jumo. Pretty difficult jump. And we're just going to run past all these guys while we have Camo. shoot there for a small boost from those flood hitting me. And 
And we're going to just make our way further on here. Okay, scary. I might die. Okay, stop shooting, please. <laughs> okay, we're good. <laughs> that was very scary, but we're fine. And now we're just heading to the end of the level here. And there's a bunch of enemies here. And what happens is the level can end with one of two conditions are met on Legendary. So one is either all the Flood die by basically you killing them all, or the Flood kill all the Sentinels. But we can speed that up by just killing the Sentinels ourselves. So I'm going to get the Plasma weapon here. Ooh, okay, scary. Scary Flood. Just going to throw a bunch of grenades here so I can live. And just try to kill these Sentinels. While trying not to die at the same time by these Flood. Okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, now on to library. So this mission is pretty repetitive. But what we're going to do is a bunch of flood bumps to speed up this level. So right here, we're going to lure some flood out. And we're going to shoot one of the flood's arms off. If these guys would follow, that would be nice. Okay. So that guy should be following. So what a flood bump is, is basically... Uh, normally you have these doors that you would have to wait for them to open. But you can get past these doors earlier. Oh, that's a really bad thing. That's why I have a checkpoint. Okay, we're fine. But when you kill a flood and they get down, they be and if they're a reviver, they'll get back up after like dying. And they lose their hitbox when they die. So when they respawn, they regain their hitbox, and if you're on top of it, it displaces your hitbox. So you can sort of use it to get through doors and stuff like that. And right there, I just did a smooth shotgun grab. Okay. Another thing to note is uh, when you pick up an overshield, you get invincibility while it's charging up. That's how I was able to do the grenade stacks on TNR and SC and that grenade jump right there. Ooh, that, that flood basically one-shotted me. And this needler flood. Okay, that was unlucky. <laughs> okay. That's fine. We get to just do a cool shotgun grab again. like that. <laughs> okay, kill all these guys, and let's hopefully not die to a shotgun flood, because the shotgun flood was the main reason why I died, because it took out my entire overshield and shield with one shot. This is legendary after all, so it's kind of expected to have some deaths in the run. 
Okay, that's bad again. But we're fine here because I decided to pistol the needler flood right there. Normally you could just run by. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now there's a trick you can do called carrier bump in this mission. I'm not going to go for it because there is a chance that you can crash your game by doing it, so I don't really want to crash my game. So I'm going to play it safe here. It's also a very, very inconsistent trick. It's like a, what, less than 10% consistency rate? Now we're just waiting for this door to open. <laughs> Sorry about the shaky camera. <laughs> Fun fact, my laptop case, that's what I'm currently running on, is slightly broken and like, if I move somewhat in any way, it starts shaking. It's kind of my bad. Okay. And now we're going to just continue walking through this section. So if you have any donations, it's a good time. All right, sounds good. We have $100 from Captain Stitches. He says, my husband is a huge fan of the Halo series. We're donating in honor of all the healthcare workers who are sacrificing their own health to keep us safe. We have $15 from Keaton RL who says, this donation is in honor of those sick, nasty grenade jumps on Silent Cartographer. I've also known about Kratos for about 20 minutes and he now has my undying respect. We have $110 from Dr. Doktor, PhD, who says, I think Halo's a pretty cool Kai. Kills aliens and isn't afraid of anything. Memes for money, let's keep the donos coming. Okay. So right here, we're just going to go through probably the most dangerous hallway of library. This is uh, the rocket flood hallway, and it has notably a rocket flood and that can definitely kill you if you get unlucky i think in practice yesterday it decided to shoot right at my feet where i couldn't really do anything about it because normally you would like dodge side to side to escape the rocket but if it a aims like at your feet you're kind of screwed so hopefully this time, there we go, it aimed like to the sky while I jumped, which is good. So I should lift this section pretty cleanly. Okay, I got blocked by that flood. Okay, mm, reminder, never, never say anything's going well until you get past that section. Otherwise, bad things happen. Just, you know. <laughs> I got blocked from behind. I'm kind of... Wow, that's amazing. Okay. <laughs> We're fine. Yeah. This section is pretty tough, though. Lots of things that can kill you. Okay. Not to mention all the carriers are super scary. Okay. Now we're good. 
I just need to walk more forwards, and we're fine. There we go. Totally zero deaths. <laughs> Okay, so now we're heading to the third floor of library. This floor is kind of interesting. There's a trick called Dark Door, which is completely RNG. It's like a 40% chance of getting a reviver for that door. And let's see how many tries it takes for me to get that. I've gotten like 25th try before, or something stupid like that. So I really hope I don't get that bad of RNG. Not to mention the past practice runs have had pretty similar bad luck. I think one was like a 10th try and the other was like a 7th try. And it's a 40% chance of a reviver, so <laughs> let's see what we get here. So right here, I'm going to be delaying a checkpoint. So I'm going to throw a grenade right here. And let's see how my checkpoint is. Okay. And let's get this flood. Oh, first try. Let's go. Good RNG. It actually happened. <laughs> Let's go. That's the marathon luck I needed. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jangus. Great reach runner. <laughs> okay. So right here, uh, if you noticed, I did a jump right there at the very edge of like the ramp-like thing. And what that did was it skipped the spawn of enemies that would normally happen right there. Very useful trick to just getting past that section without worrying saves a couple seconds as well instead of having to round do a roundabout sort of thing and right here we're going to do a trick called light bump so this door used to be reliant on rng of getting a reviver but now there's a trick using similar teleports to like the banshee teleport by clipping out of bounds and teleporting using specific pixels on the ground. So we can get to the top here, jump into the light, and now I'm using new graphics to line this up precisely so I can teleport. Failed it right there. It's kind of precise. There we go. So now we're past that door instead of waiting 90 seconds for it to open. Okay, let's see. We're at like 58 minutes. RTA. Uh, okay. <laughs> Not quite the run that I wanted so far, but we're, we're going to beat Estimate by quite a bit, as long as things go well. Okay. So right here, this is going to the last door of this mission that you would have to wait for. So I'm going to do a quick grenade jump right here. And we're going to try to get a reviver here. This is RNG. If I get a shotgun flood from here, that's optimal. 
There's one. Let's see if it's a reviver. 40% chance. Nice. Good RNG on this library. Sadly, I kind of died at the start of it. So, not as good as I wanted it to be, but should still be saving a bit of time to what my no reset splits are. Okay, now we're just heading to the trigger here. Hopefully I don't die. Okay. That was a really nice checkpoint. And I'm just throwing a grenade here. Should be able to kill like an enemy or so. And that's the end of library right there. And we're heading to two betrayals. So if you've watched runs in the past, you'll you probably haven't seen this trick unless you've been following it uh, recently, as this trick is found a couple months ago. Uh, this is Banshee out of level, and it's a pretty tough trick. So hopefully I can land it cleanly here. <laughs> it's pretty scary. But let's see. Okay. <clears throat> so this start of two betrayals is a very tough combat section. So hopefully I can get it uh, first try. Look out. Okay, right here. We can't let the monitor activate There's a bunch Halo. of enemies I'm going to him. kill. To destroy Halo. Sentinels so have the analysis. main priority. The and then this elite, because if this elite dies, then all these grunts start running. There we go. And as long as enough grunts are alive, this extra wave won't spawn here. I'm going to search what's left of the Covenant battle And right there, I press the button twice so I can deload all the enemies on this section. relatively intact. We can use them to destroy Halo. And now we're going to do a cool plasma grenade, or cool grenade lineup right here. And this should get us the Banshee sooner by exploding it closer towards us. Really nice. Okay. Now we're going to just keep flying here and set up the first part of this very tough trick. Okay. This level used to be one of the most combat intensive with like a bunch of very difficult combat sections of bridges that you would have to fight through. But we're going to skip all that with a very difficult trick. The machinery in these canyons are Halo's primary firing mechanisms. They okay. Of three phase so kill that elite. I'm going to drive this Banshee indoors here. And get out right here so we can hit so, this first generator. Destroy these generators. The monitor will need to repair That's them before the Halo can be used. That should buy us some time. Hopefully I don't die here to these sentinels. Okay, we're good. The generator central core is offline. Well done. Okay, don't kill me, please. I would prefer if you didn't do that. 
Move out and I'll mark the target with a nav point when we get closer. Now we're going to go here. We should commandeer one of the And get a checkpoint. We'll need it to reach the pulse generator in time. Checkpoint me game. Oh, this guy is right there. Do I get it now? If I don't get it, that's not a big deal, but it might be. Okay, this is actually kind of scary now. I have to hit this trick or else I'm going to lose a lot of time. I, uh, this is not good. This is actually really bad. Objective accomplished. The pulse generator has opened. I'm checkpoint glitched. The generator central core is offline. Well done. Wait, we should commandeer one of those banshees. One second. We'll need it to reach the pulse generator in time. The second pulse generator is located in I'm gonna do something really weird here. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't work then it's going to be really scary, but I should be able to make it work. Don't mind me. Please give me a checkpoint game. This is completely improvised right here, by the way. There we go, there's our checkpoint. Okay, we're good. We're good. Can I continue these good vibes with a couple of quick donations? Uh, one second. <laughs> All right. Oh, I missed it up. Okay. So right here, this is a fling that I'm going to do out of bounds here. And I'm trying to get it to go out so I can <laughs> get out of the level. Okay. Right here. And right there. And get into the Banshee and turn on new graphics so I can see the rest of the level. Okay. So now there's a bunch of triggers that I have to hit to progress this mission. There's like 20 or so, so I have to make sure that I hit all of them. Uh, now would be a good time for donations while I'm hitting all these triggers. There's quite a lot. Okay, hopefully everyone can hear me. I allegedly had my mic muted during that last one, and this was a very important one, so I'm going to repeat this one more time. And again, good vibes here. Uh, we have $50 from Jan Goose, uh, who says, Kronos, good luck on the run. Been a blast so far. And again, thank you so much for your patience. I apologize for that muted mic during that. We also have $10 from the program who says, Halo is my all-time favorite first-person shooter. I'm glad to be see it being played for such a good cause. Okay, yeah, this section is really tough. Right there, I'm shooting so I can get my timing down because you have to stay at each trigger for about a second. And five shots is roughly equal to a second. So I'm staying there for like a bit of extra time to make sure I hit the trigger at the right time. Okay, couple more. There we go, so I hit that trigger, that's important. And now I'm going to hit a couple more triggers on this level.
Okay, let's there take we go. Next pulse and now we're going to go all the way to the second generator to hit, uh, to explode it. But first we have to hit trigger down here, down at this tunnel. And all of these triggers are so that uh, you can progress the game, because the game needs you to be at a specific point in order to load the rest of the level. So if you see me make weird turns or something, that's because I'm going to a specific trigger right there. So right here, I'm flying here for this one. I'm gonna hit this generator while in the Banshee. That did it. The hit this overloaded. exit trigger. And then turn back to the old graphics here so I can see the one room where I came from. Down 1200 kilometers up spin. And, and this is the scary part. Are still powered up. The systems on the pillar of auto so, right here, I have to do a BSP load. And I have to make sure I can hit it. To start the fusion core detonation. One target remaining. Let's take care of the final pulse generator. Hit the BSP load, load the trigger, and I got the checkpoint, so I should be good for the rest of the level. And the thing is, I have to go inbounds for the rest of this level, because, like, you need to beat the game while being inbounds. So right there, I did a tricky BSP load there. Okay, don't go inbounds there. And we're going to get back here, turn sharply, and now the rest of the level is loaded. Oh yeah, by the way, game audio does disappear because of loading, like, BSP loads and everything really weirdly. And we're fine from here on. So now all I have to do is not die to uh, random stuff, otherwise I have to do the BSP loads again. So there's one specific section which I can die on, which is this tunnel right here. So hopefully I can live. Also, if people are interested, uh, this trick was f discovered, like, way back then in, like, before 2011 even, but the solo setup for it for speedruns was found by Burnt literally a couple month months ago. Big shout out to him. He's been, like, one of the major trick finders of this game in recent times. Him, uh, Joshington, Skirty, Savu, Lots of really great members of the community that have found a bunch of stuff with all the tricks and how they work in this game. So right here, I'm just hitting the last couple triggers to end the level. By the way, I just did a trick called Banshee Through Door. It's so natural to me now that I forget to explain it. But you can get a Banshee through that door by just kind of wedging your way in through there. Now we're just flying here to the end of the level. I'm going to kill all these flood here. Because we need those five flood to be dead in order for the level to finish. I'm going to fly pretty high up here so I don't take damage from enemies below. Just playing safe. Hit that bottom trigger. And hit this last one here. And now we're going to move on to Keys, which is the shortest level in the game. So we're going 
going to eject right here. Do a small grenade boost <laughs> just because I can. Final target <laughs> neutralized. Let's get out of here. And there we go. Oh boy, that was really scary. <laughs> okay, we're we're fine. Okay, so this is keys. So what I'm going to do here is an RNG manip. I have to make sure I get it right. This should work. If I get a red grunt here, that means that this manip worked. There we go. So I shoot this flood a little bit so it comes and follows me. And I'm going to line up against this wall right here. And I'm going to crouch down and shoot this flood right here and get on top of it. And it should just bump me to basically the end section. So now here I hit this low trigger right here. This causes all the enemies to spawn in, but they're kind of all glitched out and are T-posing. So now I'm just spawn killing them so that when I get to this cutscene, normally they all come back to life, but I just killed them all, so they won't appear in this cutscene and kill me. And now this is a good time for donations as this cutscene plays. <laughs> all right, sounds good. We have $25 from Nerdosaur that says, you're doing great, Kronos. Shout outs to all the Halo fans out there, and I hope you all are keeping safe and staying home. And I think that's to be said for all of chat. You are doing an awesome job, Kronos. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. This is very impressive. We have $20 from Rygetz who says, Ice Trap Mayhem, what does that mean? I need it. So really quickly again, a Ice Trap Mayhem update and that refers to some of the chests that I could open during Ocarina of Time leaves the person with a kind of frozen surprise. We are $890 so out of 5,000. So if you want to see that happen during the Zuda Randomizer, please get those donations in. Back to you, Kronos. Okay. So right there, we just threw a distraction grenade so that those enemies would kind of just look at the grenade instead of shoot at me. Do one right there too for that flood. And now we're just going to drop down here and wait for this level to end. And yeah, not much to say. We're just going to hijack this banshee that comes and flies here. And once we get in it, we're just waiting for the last cutscene here to play. Also, this Banshee is invincible. It's kind of funny. It also goes through walls and stuff. You know, typical Banshee things. And yeah. <laughs> Also, for people that are asking for my Twitch chat username, it's Kronos Returns, no underscore. I'm kind of disappointed because for the GDQ website, uh, I tried to sign up under the username Kronos, but it's already taken, so <laughs> unfortunately, I have to have this underscore R in my username. <laughs> That's how it is. Damage enough systems below it to destroy the ring. Okay, so right here, this is the last mission of the game. And I'm just trying to do this out of bounds section right here. And this is some pretty precise platforming that I'm going to be doing. I also have to hit a couple other BSP loads to continue with the game. Okay. Get there. Now we're going to do a tricky teleport. This is like pixel perfect, so I have to look here. That was a pixel too far to the right. Here we go. Oh, and then I failed that jump. OK, 
Okay. Now we're just going to get here, crouch for that low trigger. Get here. And get back in bounds, just like that. And that skips like a bunch of enemies that we normally would have to fight. I have here. one donation oh. with commentary if we have time. It's pretty funny. Okay. Yeah. We have a hundred and oh sorry, gun. <laughs> you can go ahead. Okay, just making sure. We have $117 from Ace of Spade, who says, Master Chief, mind telling me what you're doing out of herbs? Sir, speedrun strats. <laughs> okay. What are you doing out of bounds anyways? <laughs> okay, so right here, this is the reactor room. Last, like, combat-ish section of the game before the Warthog run. So we're going to do a rocket jump here. And we're going to just try to kill all of these reactors as soon as possible before all of the enemies spawn in. So we're going to go right here. Oh shoot, I missed that rocket. Okay, we're going to just wait here a little bit longer while I wait for this reactor to open. Normally I... That's not good that I missed that, but we're fine. It's going to mean my timing for this is going to be kind of weird. But we're good. If this flood can kind of just not get in my way, that would be nice, and we're out of there. Okay, so now we're heading to this last elevator, and we're going to kind of get under it by just walking forwards. We're going to just kill these guys, and leave these uh, fuel rod grunts alive for a little bit, because if they die, their fuel rods will explode and kind of chain react with all of these grenades, which is kind of scary. And now we're just running through this very end section right here. The Warthog Run. And this is just a simple driving section to the end. <laughs> okay. So right here, I guess I can kind of start wrapping things up here. Uh, I did start out originally as an Elder Scrolls runner, so I want to give a quick shout out to them. I did a Skyrim uh, showcase Monday, and that was a bunch of fun here for GDQ. Also, quick note, quick cool driving path right here. Slightly faster than taking the normal inside route. Also, big shout outs to the Halo Runs community. If you're interested in a lot of stuff for Halo speedrunning, check out the website at Halo website at HaloRuns.com. Uh, there's a lot of events that are going on. There's a official Halo Runs uh, relay race that's going to be happening uh, around June, like late June, early July-ish. And basically a bunch of runners will get together and compete in a three-way team, like relay race of all the Halo games. It's a pretty cool event. And yeah. <laughs> Just some cool driving stuff here. Okay. Yeah, big shout outs to all of the other runners too. Especially uh, my friend Cordy Axis. <laughs> He's been like kind of my rival in running 
Halo. Also, shoutouts to all of the other Halo games as well. I've been running a lot of Halo Reach recently, and a lot of the community there are really great. This is where Fohammer is coming to pick us up. Hold position here. We're skipping past Fohammer right there. Sorry. Cortana's Won't get to see her die right there. She's gone. And now, I hope everyone is hyped for the 360 that we're going to do. Get your Kevin Turtles in chats for the 360 swags. If I can get a perfect 360, guys. Oh, the leg. <laughs> okay. Hey, we did it. <laughs> Very clean 360 right there. Now hope we don't die here to a chain reaction, and we're good. And now just barrels here. Just going to try to wedge our warthog through. Oh boy, that that stutter was pretty bad. Okay, can I get my warthog through? There we go. Okay. And time comes up once I hit this ramp here. And time. <laughs> That was Halo CE Legendary. I think it's a 126 ish time. Here we go. Yeah, it says 126.30 on the screen. Not, not the run I wanted, but it was pretty underestimate right there. Uh, yeah, my PB is a 113, so this was kind of pretty bad compared to that, but it is a tough run to do a no reset for. The current world record is by Garish Goblin, it's like a 109.30ish uh, or something. Very fast run now. And I expect it to be broken to down to a 108 or even a 107 in the near future, as like all these tricks for the MCC version of the game pretty brand new so yeah thanks everyone for watching thank you for hosting and yeah shout outs to all of the gdq staff and everything really appreciate it Let's hear it one more time for Kronos, folks. What a fantastic run. Just from start to finish, everything just so impressive, especially on Legendary Mode. Thank you very much for that run. Now time for some donations. We have $25 from Pink Penguin, who says, Halo fueled my love for FPS games and the Xbox since the beginning. Always awesome to see people tear it to shreds. I knew you could get the Banshee into buildings. We have $100 from Mike's mom who says, congrats to GDQ, staff, players, and viewers who have found a way to make a difference in these difficult times. We have $50 from Biospark45 who says, glad to see the gaming community coming together for a good cause. I've been fortunate to be in a position, I've been able to work from home, but many others are not able to. And there are still many in the front lines fighting this virus. Good luck to the runners, thank you to the commentators, thanks to Direct Relief, and thanks to everyone who is donating. Time is rough, but we will all come out together. Quick update here on the ice trap mayhem. So again, as a reminder, this is for putting extra ice traps in the chest during Zooter Randomizer. Very much looking forward to that. 
So far, we are $890 out of 5,000. So if you would like to see that incentive get met, please get those donations in. So coming up next, we are going to have Kirby Star Allies that's going to be with Lori DeBunnikins. Very, very much looking forward to this run. Looking forward to seeing some Thaya donations come in. So please get those donations in, especially towards the Ice Trap Mayhem incentive. We have $25 from Anonymous who says, putting some money I've saved from cooking at home towards an effort that'll hopefully let me eat fast food again. Good luck to all the runners. And with that, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Yes, I, yep, yeah, just let me know. Resetting, yes? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. And then I need to put Lori on my VLC, so. Is that a period still gonna be there in Lord of Bunnikins in the, um, okay, all right, I didn't think so. Okay. Ooh. All right, I got you, Lori, on the feed at least. All right, folks, welcome back to Corona Relief Done Quick. Coming up next, we have Kirby Star Allies with Lori DeBenikens. Real quick, we're going to have one quick donation. We have $100 from Pinky Oats, who says, longtime viewer, first time donor. The VODs from years past often help me fall asleep at night, so I'm glad I have time to watch and give back, especially for such a great cause like all of the charities and organizations GDQ supports. Stay safe and stay home. <laughs> 